Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is obviously a direct continuation of the last video where we are using IMFD to learn how to go to Mars. And once again, Dimitri is with me to help guide us all along on this journey. In the last video, we got our plan basically set up. We figured out the best time to launch so that we could leave Earth at a 90 degree heading, get into orbit. And now we uh, have our plan. Actually, we already did the ejection burn also. So now we're ready to warp time forward, get out toward Mars, and probably have to do a mid-course correction or two along the way. Uh, so, Dimitri, what do we do at this point? How do we go forward? Well, right now all we need to do is uh, time warp, and once uh, we are outside of uh, Earth's sphere of influence, the orbit eject program will uh, close by itself. So then we're going to use the course intercept program, which we have already set on the left. Okay, so let's go ahead and warp time forward. And one of our indicators for how far out we are will be when Rotation. that orbit eject program closes. That means we're far enough away from Earth that it's no longer the strongest source of gravity. Let's go out to 10,000, so it doesn't take forever to get out there. We can see the moon flying by now. Do we want to go back to real time at this point? Uh, yeah, it's a good practice because you want to change the the source right now of the target in the set program. You see that we had the Earth over ah. here. And we want to change that to be the spacecraft that we are in. That's right, because right now the uh, the interplanetary program is, is saying that if Earth were to move from that orbit to there... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we want to press page come over here to source and do we just can we press x to set ourselves as the source you can, yes if you press x it always uh, selects the name of the vessel that you are in or you can type even uh, the name of the of your vessel but x is faster yeah okay so now we've got this uh this program updated so that we now have the source our vessel is going to be targeting mars and not earth um so what do we want to do here now what we are looking at is the delta v that we're going to need for correction Right now, we're still very close to Earth for this number to have any meaning. We're going to have to get uh, uh, quite a bit of distance uh, from Earth uh, uh, in order to to pay attention to whatever this value says. And we're going to use this uh, Delta V as our guide for the corrections for the arrival at Mars. Okay, so right now it's telling us that if we want to do a mid-course correction, we would use all that delta V, but we know from uh, from experience that being this close to Earth, this number uh, will in all likelihood work out in our favor. If we move time forward farther, it'll come down and we won't have this expensive of a burn. Yeah, also it doesn't make very much sense because we... We just finished the uh, orbit detect burn that we, we're supposed to have done a good job about it. Yeah. Uh, after all, IMFD did it all uh, automatically. So this uh, kind of uh, delta V for a correction this far out doesn't really make much, uh, much sense. And you will see how that number first goes lower, then it will go up again as you cross the boundary of being uh, absolutely away from Earth outside of Earth's influence, and uh, then it will start drop back, uh, dropping back again as we get closer to Mars. Okay, so basically we're going to hit a low point here, and we might be tempted to do a mid-course correction, but uh, Dimitri it knows go from, up from experience. It usually goes yeah. up again. Yeah, it we kind of have a wobble. So, so we'll ignore it that one time, and then it'll go up, and we might get concerned, but don't get concerned because it will come back down. Well, unless you are a quarter of the way to Mars, and uh, you can see now it's going uh, yeah. up very high, and then it will start uh, it will start uh, going down again. We want to go to 100,000 time acceleration until this reaches a minimum, and then it goes up again. And I noticed that uh, when it reached the high point, something on IMFD kind of flipped. Yeah, it uh, changes the it's like it changes the orientation of the trajectory okay it's so kind of like uh, maybe like crossing the line of nodes or something like that something like that some, uh, not the line of nodes between the planets but the line of nodes of the of the trajectory the spacecraft has right now and the and the arrival and you you can also see that it happened almost 
opposite of the point of uh, yeah of the intercept. Yeah, I think that's actually exactly when it happened. So now we can see the DV is uh, counting down very slowly. So we'll just continue warping time forward, and we're just looking for that absolute low point. Uh, I guess you can sort of maybe anticipate when that's going to happen when you start to see that those last uh, couple decimal points really, really start to slow down. But for now, they're still counting down at a pretty good clip, so we'll go ahead and continue going forward. Now, now you can see it's kind of slowing down a little bit. But uh, we'll continue moving forward. Down to about 31 meters a second on the delta V. Not quite there. Yeah, now 31. And yeah, I'm really starting to get this, uh, starting to sense how slow those numbers are counting down. So we need to be ready to back off time warp here. And I'm guessing right around 30 meters a second, maybe a little bit lower. Yeah, we've reached the bottom. Now it's going back up. So immediately back to real time. And uh, is it just a matter of doing uh, A, B, or do we want to do any tweaking? You can do a little bit of tweaking because uh, right now you need this delta V in order to arrive at Mars exactly on this date. But you can actually try and change the date a little bit to see how that helps with uh, delta V. Okay. Uh, that's only to, uh, you can do, of course you can do the correction right now and you will get to Mars on that date but uh, you can minimize the delta V that you need for correction by doing uh, uh, this yeah okay so here with the arrival date let's uh, go to page to get access to these uh, options and then we'll go plus that's actually making it worse so let's go the other way and we can see that's bringing the delta V down quite significantly uh, we're down to 11.10 now, uh, can we warp time forward a little bit to see if we can get more improvement? Exactly. When you get a minimum, you time warp the, uh, a little bit uh, more in order to see if it drops or if it goes higher. If it drops, you keep until you go to the next minimum point. If it doesn't, you make the burn right now. Okay, so right now we're seeing that we've got 11.1, .1, which is very reasonable, but we might, you know, just the DV freak in us might be able to eke out a little bit more. So let's uh, just do a little bit of time warp. And as we go forward at a thousand, we can actually see it's going up a little bit. So this is the best time right now to make the corrections. All right, so page over to these options and uh, just AB. We don't even need to go to the BV, so AB. Mm -hmm. And if you really wanted to be obsessive about saving fuel, you could go to the BV, do a manual rotation on the vessel because the uh, autopilot uses more fuel than it has to, but it's only like a meter a second or something. Okay. Do we want to uh, do any translation for that last 0.016 or...? Well, it's not that important because you have to remember that right now IMFD is aiming for the dead center on Mars. Oh, that's right. And from you can see from the trajectory that we are not that far away from uh, at the point of intercept of the, of the Mars arrival. So you can leave it like that if you want and uh, we can go ahead and uh, move to the next correction which is going to be inside uh, Mars uh, weak soy, weak uh, sphere of influence. That is when uh, orbit MFD, when it is referenced to Mars, reaches G0.01. Alright, so let's bring up orbit MFD over on the right. Let's reference Mars. And when its uh, gravitational influence indicates 0.01, then we know we are within the weak sphere of influence of Mars. And that's going to happen here in a little bit more. We're here. we got to go all the way out to there, so let's warp time forward. At the same time, of course, we will keep a track of the delta V needed for the corrections, and if this goes up for some reason, for, uh, let's say it goes to 10 meters per second, then we may want to stop before we reach this point and make another correction. But I don't think we will, we will need to do that. Yeah, so essentially uh, this is one of those whichever happens first situations. If yes, the DV... exactly. And uh, this is 
this point that they talk about, the 0.01 uh, uh, arrival at Mars uh, inside the, the weak sphere of influence, is simply an arbitrary point that I have chosen for myself and uh, in order to be consistent in my flights. It also happens that I have noticed that these are the points that uh, you get the minimum delta V uh, uh, corrections needed, the minimum delta V for the corrections. But uh, I, I, you could, uh, you could, if you wanted to make a, a corrections when, when your orbit pass, passes the orbit of Mars and you are still pretty close. Yeah, to well, Mars. it's really good it's, to have. Whatever. It's it's really good to have uh, points of reference that you can use every single time, so that you don't have to, uh, you know, so that you can have repeatable results from one flight to the next. Yeah, if I, if I'm going to use this method, these are the two points that that I use. Of course, it's not that uh, those are the necessary points, but I have found them to be useful. They are consistent, and uh, you can uh, repeat them over every flight. The first point is when the delta V reaches a minimum, and you do the adjustment with the MJD. And the second point is when you arrive at, uh, Mar at uh, the weak sphere of influence of the, of the planet you have, uh, you have targeted. Yep, that makes perfect sense, and I, and I like those points of reference because they're very definite, and there's no guesswork involved. Okay, so we're uh, warping time forward. We've still got about 40 days or something like that, about, yeah, about 40 days to go. And as we're getting closer, the DV is increasing a little bit, but we'll probably get all the way to the point uh, where, well... We'll see. We still got a little bit farther to go. We're so close that even if it gets to 15 uh, meters per second, it's not worth making the burn because it will get us again uh, aligned up with the center of Mars. And yeah. we will not want that. So in this case, even if it gets to 10, 15 meters per second, we still are going to wait for uh, a 0 0.01 arrival. And I yeah. think we're pretty close. That's a really good point. Uh, even if you're being this close, you wouldn't want to do a mid-course correction that would align you with the center of Mars anyway. So just go ahead and wait for that uh, 0.01. And yeah, we should be getting pretty close. And I'm going to try to really watch the time warp because yesterday I almost ran right into Mars. <laughs> uh, there we go. Okay, 0.01. And... Okay. and we need 27 meters per second to get to the center of Mars. But of course we don't want to get there, we're going to get to a, to a very high altitude uh, in order to make a, a re-enter and then land. Uh, so for that we're going to use the MAP uh, program. Okay, so I'm assuming we're going to bring that up on the right side? Uh, or does it not matter in this case? We're not going to use, anyway, we're not going to use the, the target intercept program anymore. Okay. So you can hit menu over here, and if you have a specific uh, base that you want to land at Mars, you can also select uh, the landing uh, base in the configuration. All right, yeah, let's do that, because uh, we typically always want to land somewhere specifically, so let's go to configuration, go down to landing target, hit set, put in Olympus, and now we'll go back to the map program. And we probably okay, need to now... reference Mars or something. Uh, you can either do that or you can uh, uh, target Mars in this view. Uh, right now it would be best to reference Mars. Okay, let's reference Mars. But even if you targeted Mars, it would still be the same thing. Now you can say we're, even without the correction, we're getting at uh, minus 2000 uh, kilometers below the, the surface. And we are going in, from the inclination, we can tell that we are going in uh, uh, retrograde. And from uh, this over here, we can tell that this is the ecliptic inclination and not the equatorial one. You can change that if you want by pressing target. And you can see here G, R, E and L. The L is the equatorial inclination, I don't know why. <laughs> that is used, but you can press and you can see it targets the equator and it now it gives you your equatorial inclination. And we're going in the retrograde uh, relative to the to the, uh, the revolution of the planet, the, uh, the direction of the of the spin. Right. Uh, not that it, it really matters, but it's uh, something that we, you can uh, watch out for. You can also, you also know uh, how many seconds away you are from periapsis and what your periapsis velocity is going to be. 
So the first thing that we want to do uh, is uh, hit the mod button so that uh, we can also see how many degrees we are uh, we need to align ourselves with uh, the base. So right now with this correction we are going to fix our periapsis altitude we're, and we are going to align our, ourselves uh, with the base. And by looking at the coordinates over here we can also tell where we are going to arrive uh, 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 where our uh, re-entry is going to be on Mars but uh, we have so much bit that uh, it doesn't really matter wherever we hit the, the re-entry uh, mm -hmm. wherever we hit the atmosphere of Mars we can uh, uh, make a skip and then uh, go ahead and uh, land at the base right so and uh, we're so far outside we're at 0 0.01 that we can do this with just a linear RCS from uh, this far out uh, do we want to set up a delta v uh, like a maneuver to see not at all simply okay. use uh, you can of course if you want but uh you can simply use a uh, linear rcs and right. just uh, look at the parameters over here okay so let's uh, let's orient the vessel so that we have an orientation that makes sense yeah. to us yeah let's Press, uh head on uh, orbit mfd and orient uh, prograde relative to mars but not use uh, the autopilot because you're too far out it's going to use the sun as the as the reference yeah it just makes it easier that way you know that uh you know when you're translating forward that you're translating forward relative to prograde as opposed to you know when your vessel is just pointing to some arbitrary spot in space then and, and right now you know that if you are going to use left uh, rcs and you are uh, uh i think we are uh, we are retrograde so probably left RCS is going to pull, uh, push our orbit outward. I think we're going to have to see about that. Yeah. So the, the number three, which would be an outward type of or uh, movement, with that would, um, since we have a retrograde orbit, that should that would push the PEA further into the planet. I believe mm -hmm. it would be basically be backwards. Let's find yeah. out. So I'm thinking one will actually extend us out closer to the surface and I'm and I'm wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, me too. I thought so too, but So with just a little bit of 3 and again this is uh it would actually be kind of cool if we could have like a a DV meter of some sort just to just to sort of see what we're actually doing how well, much you can make a you can make a check uh, we can write down how much delta v you have now uh yeah. with burn time calculator and of course we could have set this up as a maneuver in the delta velocity program but it uh, it is really not worth the trouble i mean you see how how little rcs uh, yeah. uh, linear rcs uh, you needed to uh, to press and you already have the the altitude pretty much where we want it for uh, for a mars reentry at uh, at this velocity i usually go for about uh, 20 kilometers if i'm flying the xr2 in this case, we're flying the Delta Glider, so you can probably land it <laughs> right away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, what you don't have is the angle. Right. If you want, you can uh, try up and down uh, RCS to see if that helps. It doesn't really matter because uh, you have uh, uh, you have a lot of cross range uh, on Mars, and you can uh, use the atmosphere to get pretty much where you want. Right. But just to show, but just by using a it, little bit of RCS here, we're also bringing the angle down to near zero. And I'll use a little bit of a inward translation to bring the PEA back down. Uh, by, uh, by, by using up and down RCS, you're changing your orbital plane, essentially. That's why the angle uh, drops. And you can see that because the whole uh, uh, orbit MFT uh, rotates to the right. Yeah, so technically... We might even want to rotate. May want, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. a little bit this way, and then we would have a more efficient up down. Translation. Okay. Well, that's basically exactly where we want to be, and. Uh, that will this might this might slip a little bit or is this is, is, is a little bit yeah. about a kilometer or so and perhaps uh, a few uh, a few tenths of a degree it doesn't really matter uh, 
uh, what uh, you can do is you want you can check uh, the coordinates and where you're going to arrive at uh, Mars because these are going to be the coordinates of this periapsis over here. Yeah, let's do that. Let's okay. So Olympus is at uh, twelve uh, seventy four north and one thirty five west. We're saying we're going to arrive one fifty five west, which is going to be a little bit. Uh, past, it's gonna be, probably be close to this line right the li here. The line is one at uh, one fifty exactly, so five degrees left of the line. Yeah. And uh, at uh, two south, uh, pretty much exactly at the equator uh, over here. So I'd say that we're going to arrive at the seven kilometer altitude. Okay, we're going to hit the atmosphere at 60, 50, 40 kilometers, a little bit earlier than that. But basically, we're going to be at this altitude. Uh, right about here. Yeah. And how so, much will Mars rotate before we get there? Do we know? Well, well periapsis is 435,000 seconds. That's still... Uh, no, that's our position when we arrive at Mars, at this periapsis. Uh, oh, it, it actually... Has, so, okay. has already, taken into it has account. already taken into account. The only thing that it's going to change is by the time we hit this point, until we get to the base, that very with about a few minutes worth of rotation that's all yeah and there's there is enough time uh, to slow down i'm not really sure i mean uh, mars has uh, a very thin atmosphere so i'm not so sure about that i usually give it about uh, th more than 30 degrees but uh, we are flying build a glider so you can do a, a very <laughs> aggressive uh, a very aggressive re-entry. I'm just trying to think when you, when I do that, uh, uh, how base still but Olympus. Even okay, so this time it just so happened that we arrived before the the base, and we can tell yeah. of course that we ah no, sorry we're not arriving before the base, we're arriving after the base. Can you tell me how I know that? Um, oh, 135. I cannot. Equatorial inclination. We are retrograde. We're going ah, down this way. That's right. We're, we're going down this way, and we're actually hitting the periapsis after the right, base. Right, right, exactly. And this, and this is a point that I want to make. Sometimes we are going to arrive after the base, but that's you get inside the atmosphere if you, until you reach orbital speed, and then you skip around and you go for the base. Right. That's all. So if we wanted to, we could maybe do a bit of translation to move the longitude farther to the east um, I mean not that we necessarily want to do that yeah. but well basically what you would want I mean if you think about it right now Mars is rotating this way and we are coming in uh, 141 so this would be 90 exactly 141 would be something about something like this kind of inclination I don't know if you can see the map. I'm going uh, the mouse. I'm going to yeah, move it a little it. bit slower right now. So this would be the the trajectory that we are going to to have when we arrive. So basically, we want to arrive a little bit faster, so Mars doesn't have enough time to rotate this much. Right. But I uh, and you can do that by first pressing forward prograde to get there a little bit faster, and then adjust the rest of the uh, directions of translation but uh, basically for me it, it really is not uh, worth it I mean you can even uh, uh, hit uh, re-enter at this point that we said that we re-enter even with uh, opposite direction going uh, uh, past the base and uh, make a large turn and get uh, to Mars make a large turn in inside the atmosphere which where you're going to use for a uh, also to slow you down and then get to the base. Yeah, yeah, I whatever, think I think that's from, right. From this point, from this point, it's whatever method that everyone has. But if you wanted to arrive aligned with the base, this is what you would use. Uh, there are of course some other tricks that you can use right now because uh, we have used uh, what uh, ten meters total correction, something like that. Yeah, it was eleven. Ah, uh, sorry, eleven meters when we made the first correction and uh, whatever we used uh, now for translation I don't think it was more than two or three meters per second so that's the total correction we have done so far yeah and if we looked here at the propellant that we have you can see you know that we've used very little propellant overall uh, 
So that's just something to reference. Mm -hmm. Another thing that you can do now is to try and use the base approach program of uh, interplanetary MFT if you want to get a slightly better uh, uh, prediction for the uh, uh, to set up a, a flight so that you arrive at the base uh, uh, and uh, you are before the base when you hit uh, the re-entry. And uh, but that's uh, going to cost in uh, delta v because right now we have a trajectory that is after the base, so we're going to have to make a correction for that. But basically, for me, it's not even worth uh, using up the delta v because you can use uh, the atmosphere of Mars to to get to the base that you want. If we were flying a capsule or something like that, then that uh, would be something uh, worth to to do. Yeah, and just for people just to know, when you get down to Mars, if you keep your altitude at around 40 kilometers and a little bit lower uh, don't get much above 40 kilometers you'll have all the uh, you'll have all the dynamic pressure that you need to be able to fly and do a complete u-turn and in the delta glider you can get down much lower than that but if you sometimes you want to hold on to as much velocity as you can so try to fly you know at around 38 39 40 kilometers and you can do a complete u-turn like Dimitri's talking about and then you can go back to the base so, uh, but just out of curiosity, since we do have a couple more minutes left here, uh, what if we wanted to use that Delta V program, uh, or not Delta V, but base approach, what would we need to do for that? Okay, open, open it up on the left as we are right now. Uh, sorry, we have the map on the left, so perhaps it would be better to open it up on the right okay. and keep them up. Okay, go to the menu and uh, select the base approach program. Okay, we have base approach. Now you can see that we are so far outside the Mars uh, sphere of we are inside the weak sphere of influence. Mars is not the dominant body yet, so we have the reference uh, as the Sun, and we need to change that to change our reference to Mars. Okay, so reference Mars, got it. Okay, and uh, now you can see already that the prediction that uh, without uh, adjusting everything, the prediction is not very very accurate can see the map program where we are arriving. So we would want to go further inside uh, Mars' sphere of influence in order to use the base approach program uh, in a way that it would be efficient. Okay, so bring up orbit MFD so we can keep an eye on the gravitational influence, or can we even see that in the base approach program? Uh, not really, but you can zoom out and see where the spacecraft is exactly right now, and uh, press the sphere of influence the soy button to okay. see where you are relative to the to the sphere of influence of Mars. Okay, so on the uh, there we go. Let's go out even farther. So here's our spacecraft. Here's the sphere of influence. So now let's bring up interplanetary on that side. Now we've got our base approach program. So let's go ahead and warp time forward. Get closer to. Basically, when you see the trajectory matching the one that is uh, on the map program, that's when you have a relatively good uh, prediction on the base approach. And right now it's still showing that we're hitting the Mars on that side, but it's coming up as we get in closer. And we're almost into the strong sphere of influence. And that's when it gets more accurate. So, pretty much we can uh, start uh, adjusting the variables uh, now. Okay, back to real time, and let's just zoom in here. Okay. Now, of course, this will cost in Delta V. Right. Uh, well, uh, before we you, we did not need any other corrections, and we and we got uh, to our target basically. But we needed to make a a, a skip a skip reentry. That's how I call it. It's like throwing a pebble in a lake, and you want it to lose all its speed on the first, uh, on the first uh, contact with the water, and then simply make one skip and land. Yeah. And that's basically what we will do. But uh, we can try and set it up a little bit better with the base approach program. So we need to target the base, of course. So in this case, Olympus. Yeah, and again, this might be helpful for people that aren't using winged vessels. Maybe you've got a capsule of some kind, or maybe you're using the mm -hmm. uh, Shuttle A or something. So. Uh, so the next thing we need to set is the uh, the altitude of the entry. Okay, let's go over to altitude, and probably want that what about five or ten. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. 7.5k, oh, split the difference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, with the with the Raven Star, I would choose something around 15 kilometers. With a Delta Glider, obviously you can go lower. Yeah. No, the re-entry angle. You want uh, to have a solo re-entry angle. I mean, you do, we are not coming back from uh, from the moon to Earth in this case. Now, you asked me in a previous video about the re re-entry angle. There is an exact definition in Wikipedia if you want to, to check. I don't uh, remember it. But basically, it is the angle that you are hitting the atmosphere. Uh, if you had zero degrees re-entry angle, it means that you would be almost perfectly parallel with the atmosphere when you arrived for uh, re-entry. Okay. Uh, so, but if you have a uh, 90 degrees re-entry re angle, it means that you are dropping vertically okay. to the surface of the planet. So the 45 degrees means that you are having, you are coming in exactly diag diagonally, and uh, you need a, a small re-entry angle in, in order to make a a good uh, re-entry because you want to stay in the atmosphere for as long as possible. Okay, actually that's that's a very helpful explanation. I, I understand that much better now. Great. Mm -hmm. So here we want to have something around uh, 1.5, 2 degrees and then go for more. Of course Mars is more forgiving that, uh, than other uh, planets than right. Earth. Uh, because uh, it has a, a, the, the atmosphere is not so dense. Uh, the next variable is the anticipation. How many degrees do you anticipate the re-entry to take you? Yeah. Uh, for Earth, I wouldn't go for more than 45 degrees, but Mars has a thin atmosphere, so it may take uh, up to 60 degrees in order to make a, a, a re-entry. Yeah, and again, the anticipation so, angle, that's how far, uh, th th how far in front from, from of the, the base. From the point you contact with the atmosphere up to the point that you arrive at the base. Right. And now the next thing that we need uh, to check here is the direction of the flight. Because you know, you know that we are going retrograde mm -hmm. and uh, if we start, uh, the next variable would be this one, hint. And start adding seconds in order for the for IMFT to find the solution. But if you use prograde, it's going to find the prograde solution. Uh huh. So we so want to have that can, retrograde. You can, you can see that uh, if you want, you can leave prograde and start adding uh, seconds until uh, it finds a solution. Obviously, uh, it's going to be something like when you reach periapsis altitude. So it's not going to find an 8,000 second solution because you are going to be at periapsis in 46,000 seconds. And it may not even do that because sometimes you, have, you may have not uh, uh, used the correct uh, uh, variables over here. Perhaps it is impossible to get an angle of 60 degrees with these uh, settings. Okay. That's good to know. So sometimes there you, you have to adjust other variables in order to even come up with a valid solution. Yes, and sometimes it may not uh, even find uh, a solution in this program. So you can use uh, another way to do it is by by hitting the orbit insert button. Okay. Uh... Uh, sorry, uh, not the button. The, uh, select a different approach instead for re-entry. No, we were, we were in the correct program in the. Uh, in the base approach program as we were before. I'm sorry, I did not phrase it correctly. Select approach for uh -huh. and change it. There are two different variables. There is the re-entry old. What that does is that it keeps your... Uh, uh, go back to the re-entry old so I can explain. Yeah. Basically, it keeps the altitude and the anticipation, but it uh, changes the re-entry angle by itself in order to find the solution to get you to the base when you want. And you can say right now it's trying to find the solution for zero seconds. So yeah. this is not a valid solution. But uh, you can change the time until you get uh, a, a better solution. That would be the RET? So, yeah. Uh, uh, basically that's a time to re-entry. And if we move that closer to the periapsis? Mm -hmm. You need to look at the, uh, basically, uh, previously we said you want to keep three variables steady, the altitude, the re-entry angle, and the anticipation, and find the solution for the time. 
now it's keeping steady only the altitude and the anticipation and it is changing the rear triangle by itself in order to find the solution for this time and you already know that you are going to have to be somewhere close to 40,000 or even more than that yeah so let's push that forward now is re-entry old is it better in this case than the new well it's a different it was actually implemented in an older uh, uh, version of uh, IMFD I think and uh, uh, then uh, the author kept it uh, also in the newer uh, versions because it was so helpful. Sometimes you don't uh, want exactly the, the solution that IMFD gives you for the uh, re-entry angle you have chosen or you may have chosen uh, the wrong re-entry angle and it, it will not find the solution like we did here. So you switch over to the old re-entry program and uh, you try a different way to find the solution but from what I can see over here uh, it's not possible to find the solution for a good re-entry angle okay you can go back and uh, and uh, select the orbit insert orbit insert basically uh, is going to make a, a, a correction but you can use uh, these are connected right now so you can use the plan if you change the page over here to see where it will actually get you by looking at the so it's not that much of a difference relative to to where we are now and it is messing up our angle yeah okay so basically the bottom line here is that the best way to do what we're trying to do here would just be to use the atmosphere and turn around in the atmosphere and come back uh, in this particular case, we just don't have a good solution for arriving at the base ahead of time. And, and we could have had a good solution if we had thought about it farther out. You know, when we were like at 0.01 or something, we could have <clears throat> adjusted our orbit at Mars so that it would be prograde instead of retrograde. Yeah, we could have done something like that. But it again, uh, you plan the whole trip from the beginning... Right. So you know what steps you you need to. This we thought of the last minute. So uh, right now it's difficult to find a solution. We can play around a little bit more by going to re-entry old, and play a, a little bit more with the flight time in order to see if we will find the solution. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we can. We got a couple minutes here. We can do that. I don't want to belabor the point too long because we are coming up close to forty minutes on this video. So. Mm -hmm. um, so what would we adjust here though if we wanted to try that? you adjust this variable over here and perhaps the anticipation to get a slow a smaller anticipation for to, for about 50 degrees but let's see first let's start by setting this to 40 to sorry uh, 34000 um let's do set okay okay and to keep adding Okay, now no, it's going the wrong way. The re-entry angle is way too big. You, you are coming. You can see that we are coming in yeah. diagonally. And, uh, so let's go the other way and see what kind of. That's about. Okay, let's keep going. Now you can see, of course, what kind of delta v you need for that. Yeah, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it... It's not even worth it when you can use the atmosphere to yeah uh, to do that. But if we knew from the beginning, if we were flying a capsule from the beginning and we, and we wanted to land it at a very precise uh, location, then we would have uh, used uh, the whole approach from the beginning and uh, first of all not uh, arrive at Mars in a retrograde orbit and uh, make the base approach uh, earlier and with, uh, with more corrections as we arrive uh, at Mars. Yeah, well, this makes a great point uh, to how important it is to plan everything in advance. Don't just jump into orbiter and point your vessel somewhere and then decide at the last minute what you want to do. Uh, figure it out in advance. That way you can you can get accomplish all these burns when you're still, you know, thousands and thousands of uh, you know miles out in space. But when you get right up on top of the planet, it's kind of hard to do adjustments because you can see here if we wanted to do any adjustments now, we're looking at... You know delta v costs that are costing us more than the whole trip to mars did it's ridiculous yeah, exactly exactly 
Okay, well, I think that uh, pretty well explains everything here. Gives us the gives us the simple version of how to go from the Earth to Mars. And in another video, we'll take a look. We'll pick up back from the save point at Earth, and we'll kind of fiddle around with the things a little bit, and we'll show uh, an even more sophisticated example of how to get to Mars. Uh, even uh, even more accurate than uh, a 15 meter per second uh, corrections that we used now. Yeah, that's definitely very impressive. I think with TransX, the best I've ever able, ever been able to do for Mars was about 55 meters a second worth of mid-course yeah, corrections. Somewhere around 50. I mean, it, it it doesn't get better than that. Yeah. Okay, very good. All right, well, thank you once again for watching uh, the video. Hit the like button down below. Check a link. Check for the link in the description for Dimitri's YouTube channel. He has some cool videos there, so be sure to check that out as well. Uh, leave a comment thanking Dimitri for helping us all out. And I will see you in the next video. Practice because you want to change the the source right now of the target in the set program. You see that we had the Earth over uh -huh. here, and we want to change that to be the spacecraft that we are in. That's right, because right now the uh, the interplanetary program is is saying that if Earth were to move from that orbit to there, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we want to press page. Come over here to source, and do we just can we press X to set ourselves as the source? You can, yes. If you press X, it always uh, selects the name of the vessel that you are in, or you can type even uh, the name of the of your vessel. But X is faster. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got this uh, this program updated so that we now have the source. Our vessel is going to be targeting Mars and not Earth. Um, so what do we want to do here? Now, what we are looking at is the delta V that we are going to need for correction. Right now, we're still very close to Earth for this number to have any meaning. We're going to have to get uh, a, quite a bit of distance uh, from Earth uh, uh, in order to to pay attention to whatever this value says. And we're going to use this uh, Delta V as our guide for the corrections for the arrival at Mars. Okay, so right now it's telling us that if we want to do a mid-course correction, we would use all that delta V. But we know from uh, from experience that being this close to Earth, this number. Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is obviously a direct continuation of the last video where we are using IMFD to learn how to go to Mars. And once again, Dimitri is with me to help guide us all along on this journey. In the last video, we got our plan basically set up. We figured out the best time to launch so that we could leave Earth at a 90 degree heading, get into orbit. And now we uh, have our plan. Actually, we already did the ejection burn also. So now we're ready to warp time forward, get out toward Mars, and probably have to do a mid-course correction or two along the way. Uh, so, Dimitri, what do we do at this point? How do we go forward? Well, right now all we need to do is uh, time warp, and once uh, we are outside of uh, Earth's sphere of influence, the orbit eject program will uh, close by itself. So then we're going to use the course intercept program, which we have already set on the left. Okay, so let's go ahead and warp time forward, and one of our indicators for how far out we are will be when Rotation. that orbit eject program closes. That means we're far enough away from Earth that it's no longer the strongest source of gravity. Let's go out to 10,000, so it doesn't take forever to get out there. And we can see the moon flying by now. Do we want to go back to real time at this point? Uh, yeah, it's a good... To be ready to back off time warp here. And I'm guessing right around 30 meters a second, maybe a little bit lower. Yeah, we've reached the bottom. Now it's going back up. So immediately back to real time. And uh, is it just a matter of doing uh, AB or do we want to do any tweaking? You can do a little bit of tweaking because uh, right now you need this Delta V in order to arrive at Mars exactly on this date. But you can actually try and change the date a little bit to see how that helps with uh, Delta V. Okay. Uh, that's only to, uh, you can do, of course you can do the correction right now and you will get to Mars on that date but uh, you can minimize the delta v that you need for correction by doing uh, uh, this 
Yeah, okay, so here with the arrival date, let's uh, go to page to get access to these uh, options, and then we'll go plus. That's actually making it worse, so let's go the other way. And we can see that's bringing the delta V down quite significantly. Uh, we're down to 11.10. Now, uh, can we warp time forward a little bit to see if we can get more improvement? Exactly. When you get a minimum, you time warp the, uh, a little bit uh, more uh, in order to see if it drops or it will time acceleration until this reaches a minimum and then it goes up again. And I noticed that uh, when it reached the high point, something on IMFT kind of flipped. Yeah, it uh, changes the. It's like it changes the orientation of the trajectory. Okay, it's kind of like um, maybe like crossing the line of nodes or something like that. Something like that. Some, uh, not the line of nodes between the planets, but the line of nodes of the of the trajectory the spacecraft has right now, and the and the arrival. And you you can also see that it happened almost opposite of the point of uh, yeah of the intercept. Yeah, I think that's actually exactly when it happened. So now we can see the DV is uh, counting down very slowly. So we'll just continue warping time forward, and we're just looking for that absolute low point. Uh, I guess you can sort of maybe anticipate when that's going to happen when you start to see that those last uh, couple decimal points really, really start to slow down. But for now, they're still counting down at a pretty good clip. So we'll go ahead and continue going forward. Now, now you can see it's kind of slowing down a little bit. But uh, we'll continue moving forward. Down to about 31 meters a second on the delta V. Not quite there. Yeah, now 31. And yeah, I'm really starting to get this, uh, starting to sense how slow those numbers are counting down. So we need to, uh, will in all likelihood work out in our favor if we move time forward farther. It'll come down and we won't have this expensive of a burn. Yeah, also it doesn't make very much sense because we. We just finished the uh, orbit detect burnet. We we're supposed to have done a good job about it. Yeah. Uh, after all, IMFD did it all uh, automatically. So this uh, kind of uh, delta V for a correction this far out doesn't really make much uh, much sense. And you will see how that number first goes lower, then it will go up again as you cross the boundary of being uh, absolutely away from Earth outside of Earth's influence and uh, then it will start drop back, uh, dropping back again as we get closer to Mars. Okay, so basically we're going to hit a low point here and we might be tempted to do a mid-course correction, but uh, Dimitri knows from, up from experience. It usually goes yeah. up again. Yeah, we kind of have a wobble. So, so we'll ignore it that one time and then it'll go up and we might get concerned, but don't get concerned because it will come back down well, unless you are a quarter of the way to Mars, and uh, you can see now it's going uh, yeah. up very high, and then it will start uh, it will start uh, going down again. We want to go to 100,000 